in, in Leningrad, and we were in Tbilisi, and we were in Vilnius, and we were in Tashkent. Um, we were in Tashkent, and we were in Almaty. And how far we in Almaty? Was noch nicht. But I hadn't been back to Russia till two years ago. I, I was not in Russia for twenty years. I went to the Kvarim. I went for Chadala Tevis, as by the Alter Rebbe and by the Baal Shem Tev. Yeah. And then last year, two years ago, I was in in Rostov and in Lubavitch. I've never been. Actually, I've been only in once. Like, I was only by Tabal Alter Rebbe, but you've been there much more. Gadich. Gadich. Hadich. No, please. Gadich. Gadich. It bothers you. No, it's just not right. <laughs> okay, Rabbi Isaac Gomler. Okay, shall we? Okay, so let's do the second pasuk. Her. In Chumash, in the Tesh Bechsav, in Chumash, when somebody wants to say, I am totally subservient to Hashem. Totally bottle talk on this bottle. When somebody wants, I'm totally nothing in front of Hashem. You know what word he uses? Ma, mem hey. Like chokhmo, koyach ma, you learned that in Tanya. Like what? Chokhmo is so two like, words. Mem hey, ma. What? Ma means bitl. Right. What am I? I'm nothing. Moishan aren, twice. Say, v'nachnu mo, v'yaren ma hu. When the Jews are complaining that Moshe and Adam are doing a bad job, Moshe says, Nachnu mo, mo. Mo means nothing. Now, mo is the gemate of Hashem's name. How? Yud Kei Vav Kei is 26, right? Yud Kei Vav Kei is 26. Oh, mine is 45. Mine is 45. If you write out Yud Kei Vav Kei with Aleph, I'll show you. It gets to 45. Look, watch. Okay, here, look. Yud Vav Dalet is 20. Yeah? Hey is 6. Vav Hey with an Aleph. If you write that out, it's 13. Hey 6. Tenny is 26, huh? 39, 45. So Shem's name is Ma. And Adam, Aleph, Dalid, Mem is also Ma. Want to see something cool? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? If you have just Yud K Vafki, how much is it? Just the first letters, how much is it? 26, 26 yeah? 45 minus 26 is how much? 19, right? Chava. Ches is 8, and 6 is 14, and A is 19. Behind Adam is Chava. So Adam is Abish's name. Adam is Hashem's name. So you see, when Meshach Rabbein says, what does it mean? I am nothing. I am what? Why? Because I'm connected to Hawaii, I'm connected to Insaf. Now, there's Madregis. There are people who are Ma. And there are people who are Kocha. Chav, Chav, Hey is also 45. Chav is 20. Chav is 20. Hey is 5 is 45. What's the difference between someone being Ma? Ashley Ha'am She Ma Loi. Ashley Ha'am She Kocha Loi. What's the difference? If you're in a very high Madrege, so you say Ma. If you're the very low madrig, you say kocho. That's the remez. In other words, Rabbi Isai girls, the crap is as well, Yidner and Golos. And in Golos, it's not good. It's not good begashmias. And more importantly, it's not good beruchnias. The spiritual level of Yidn is so diminished that you don't see overtly, you don't see clearly how they're the Abishtas people. You don't see clearly the Hashem's name. You don't see clearly more. Instead, you have kocha. But kocha is still ma. 
<laughs> when you're talking about big tzaddikim, yeah. you look at them, you see ma. You look at small tzaddikim, you see kocha, you don't see ma. But it's really the same. In other words, in the end, there's a very, very deep bittle, which is a symptom of shema vaya, of being in the Abish's presence. But if you're on a high level, it's direct, it's memhe. If you're on a low level, it's kocha, it's ashri ha'am shev kocha loy. That when yidin are in the madrega of om, the ma is more concealed. That means the ma, the idea that inside of them is Hashem, that their bottle of Hashem is more concealed, but it doesn't matter. You look at a yidin golos, you don't see that he's special. You don't see godliness in a revealed way, but if you dig deep enough, you'll find kocha. What's kocha? The Eibishter. You know the Friedrich Rebbe translates? I have it here from the Friedrich Rebbe. Kocha means just like this. The Friedrich Rebbe says in Yiddish, I'll read you the words. Vos mean, the previous Rebbe says, Kocha means Vos es is Vuhu zik hayadus Shebetei kolachat ni Yisrael Azei is das. Kocha means every Jew this is how it is. Just like this. In other words, a Yid can be in the very lowest level but if you dig deep enough underneath a Yid, you'll find Kocha. You find this is how it is. In other words, the Yechidah Shebenefesh, the Pintel Yid, in bigger people, is more. In smaller people, it's Kocha. But it's Ashri Am Shekocha. Even Yidin, who are in the Madrig of Am. How did I translate the word Am before? That they're weak. If you dig deep enough inside the Am, you'll find Kocha. It's not more, but it's kocha. More and kocha is the same. It's just a question of how close to the, how easy it is to identify. You understand? And again, what the way it explained in the Sfarim is because actually I'm shek kocha. Shek kocha means Moshe. Moshe means the connection to the Rebbe, to the Tzaddik. Actually, I'm shek kocha loy because there's a Moshe Rabbeinu. Every year is kocha. Kacha, huh? Kacha. At least if it's not more, it's kocha. Ma, the, same the same 44, similar, right? Mohi Gia him in the end of the Megillah, Gil's Esther. Moro al Kocha, or Mohi Gia Lehim, in the end of the Megillah, Moro al Kocha, in the end of Megillah's Esther, the book of Esther, which is the darkest time, you have Mohi Gia, Moro al Kocha, meaning to say, if you can't have Mohi, you have Kocha. If the Bittal Tashem is not easy to see, dig a little deeper, you'll find Kocha. It's the same Yid. It's the same Nishama. It's the same Yid. You dig a little deeper. So the Apostle says, Ashrei Amche Kocha. That a Yid in Golos, who's only in the Madreig of Kocha, is Ashrei. Ashrei means that when you uncover what that Yid is on the inside, you reveal Oishar, Tainuk, Ein Seif. And that's the second half of the Apostle. Ashrei Ha'om Shavaya Lekov. At first, it's ha'om shekochale. When you look at a yidin galos, it's ha'om. What does ha'om mean? He's weak. And his relationship with Abish is kocha. It's very, very hidden. That's what the word kocha connotes. It's very, very, very hidden. But the ha'om shekochale, when you scratch it, when you irritate it, when you wake it up, becomes ha'om shehavaya lekov. The second half of the pasuk. Ha'am means the people. Shahavaya lakov, that Ain safe is their personal God. That's it, I said. Hashem means Ain safe is Elakov, is their personal God. So I guess you could say the transition from Golos to Giula. In Golos, it's Ha'am Shekachale. In Giula, the Ha'am Shekachale becomes the Ha'am Shahashem Elakov. In other words, instead of the idea, that the bit of Yidin HaKadosh Baruch Hu being very concealed, it becomes very revealed. That's the Tachin HaPasuk. Ashley Am Shekoch Alei, Ashley Am Shashem Alekoch. And again, it's perfect. It's exact. You know, it works. It works. You understand? Okay, are we clear? Huh? Are we clear or not? It's the old story. I, I've said this a hundred times, yeah? A father has two children and they get lost. They get lost. 
So the children go looking for the father. The problem is every step that they're making to look for the father, they're actually going in the wrong direction. So they think they're looking for the father, they're going in different directions. So the more they look, the farther they go from the father. Yeah, there's two of them, right? One of them's name is Rus, and the other one's name is Orpo. Yeah? After a certain amount of time, Orpa says, the father has forgotten us. Orpa is from the word oira, for pari, the back. The Papa forgot about us. Forgot about us. He says, you know what? He forgot about me. I'm going to forget about him. Rus is Begimati 606, which is the number of mitzvahs a yid has that a goy doesn't. Right? There's 613 mitzvahs. Seven of them goyim have seven hundred and six hundred and thirteen minus seven is begimati Rus. When Rus became a goyidus, she took on six hundred and six more mitzvahs. Yeah, and Rus says, "My father never forgets about me." It's two sons. One loses his father. He cries and he laments and he's upset, but he says, ah, "My father forgot about me. I'm going to forget about my father." The other one doesn't cry, but my father will never forget me. That's kocho. And the reward for kocha is Hashem Alikov. In Golis, it's kocha. What does kocha mean? On the outside, there's nothing special. But a yid knows the Abish never forgets him. Therefore, when Mashiach comes, the kocha loy turns into Hashem Alikov. That ain't safe. Avaya means ain't safe is Alikov. It's his personal God. Just like we said in the previous Pasuk, Harachav Pichav Amaleyu, Mashiach comes, you ask for wealth because you're rich enough to manage the wealth in a way that you'll manage the wealth and the wealth is not going to destroy you. By the same token, the coming of Mashiach is transitioning from Ha'am She'kochale to Ha'am She'ashem Do you follow? Yes. Clear, yeah? Beautiful. One more pasuk. Vani. What's Vani? Oisius Ayin. Al of Yud Nun. Vani. Huh? Azei Shetan Chasidis from Kabbalah. Which is higher, Ani or Ayin? Ha, huh? which is higher, Ani or Ayin? The answer is Ani is lower, but has a higher source. That again, I don't understand. Like, Ayin and Ani is the same Oasis. Ani and Ani? Ani and Ayin, Aleph, you, Nun, ah, Aleph, Nun, you are the same Oasis. Ayin means nothing. Ayin means Ma. What does Ani mean? I. But where does the person get his eye from? Where does my eye, my ego come from? From the eye of Atma Samos and Sabar, of Hashem. So Ani is lower than Ayin, and its source is higher than Ayin. Like it says in Davening, Vani Tfilosi, Vani Tfilo. Vani Tfilo means that when a Yid Daven, he's revealed the Madrega Vani, which is higher and lower than the Madrega Vayin. Okay? So we say Vani, Vechasta Chavatachti. Ani means a Yid. What's a Yid? That is Ayin. Ayin is the same thing as ma, it's the same thing as kocha. On the outside, you see ani, I. The pnimius of ani is not only ayin, it's even higher than ayin. The, the, if you look inside a yid, you see the ani of the abish to himself. And ani bechastachavatachti, a yid has to be talking, and the abish is chesed. Now, the word chastacha you should recognize, because last week's whole class was on the word chastacha, yeah? But the key is the word betachta, I trust. Ani bechastachavatachti. Remember I told you the story last week? Remember I told you the story last week? And so this week, on the WhatsApp, some Hungarian Jew told the story much more dramatic than any of the you could ever tell it. Rabbi Shvei was six or seven years old. Oh, yeah. And his mother sent him from Tashkent to wherever they were living to learn in Samarkand. And she told him, I will come. She came two years later. And he was waiting for her in the train station. So she says, how do you know I'm coming? He says, no, I came every week to wait for you. Every time the train came from that city to here, I waited, because he told me you're going to come, right? That's like, when he has a yid trusts, the Ibrish is chesed. We're talking, trusts, right? How many tall times have people told you in your life, trust me, just trust me, huh? Anytime someone tells you, don't just trust me, don't trust him. <laughs> Except if he's the Ibrish the problem with the Abish is you may have to wait a while. Bani Ayid, Bani Oisius Ayin says, Bechastacha, Batachti, Bechastacha means the Chesed of Chesed, Chesed of Haiz. I trusted, I trusted that 
I guess to put it in language of our generation, I trust the Mashiach will come. I, I never stopped trusting. I never lost hope. I never stopped to trust. The trust was always there. The trust that the Chesed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu will ultimately emerge never left me. How could you trust indefinitely? How could you trust? How could you hope and not give up hope? How, how come you don't quit? How could any human being trust something or somebody for so long without quitting? Huh? Because you trust. Because you trust. Because you're talking about the Ani When a yid identifies inside of himself the Ani, the Ayin, that inside it is a piece of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, there's a Ma of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, what's even higher than Ma, Vani Bechaz Tachav Tachti, that becomes the basis for the trust that the Ebesh is Chesed, and the Ebesh is Chesed means a Chesed which is above Ishtashlos, an infinite Chesed, which Hashem shows us when Mashiach comes. First taste. And then it says, Yoge Libi B'Yeshua Secha, my heart is gladdened by your Yeshua, by your salvation, Ashira la Hashem, I will sing a song to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ki Gomel Alai, because he's done a kindness for me. So way, the way these words are explained, the way these words are explained, and I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how it fits into the words, but I, again, I don't make this stuff up. Like I said to you once before, if it doesn't sound good, you can blame it on me. If it sounds good, you know it says in Sfarim. Everything I'm teaching you says in Sfarim. I'm not making this up. But it says in the Chesidus, on these words, is the following. This is brought by Avram Avinu. I mean, this is how it says in Chassidus. This is brought by Avram Avinu. What was Avram Avinu's greatness? That he went from being Avram to being Avraham. Right? Hashem changes it from Avram to Avraham. What is the transition from Avram to Avraham? Huh? Avram means he's so smart, no one understands a word. Avram, out of Beis Ram, is called Seichel Anel Amikol Rayet. Avram Avinu was so smart, nobody can understand Avram Avinu's chacham. Right? There are people on earth who are so smart that nobody understands how smart they are. Paket, we can even think they're silly. One of the most tragic stories in the Gemara, it's really a tragic story, is the story of Chenya Magal. You know the story of Chenya Magal? The Gemara says, the Mishnah says, the Gemara says, he slept for 70 years. He slept for 70 years. The whole Kolos Baal he slept. But it says in the Navi, that Golos is like a dream, and he laughed. How could you call Golos a dream? How could you call seven years a dream? He said, Abish just showed him he slept for 70 years. And he wakes up <laughs> after sleeping for 70 years. I don't know how his body, he must have gone into a very deep hibernation, into a torpor. You know, his, his body reduced to one heartbeat an hour, you know, like, like bats or some hummingbirds. Based on, there are animals that go into uh, what's it called hibernation. 70 years he hibernated. When he went to sleep, there was a donkey next to him. And there was a man planting a tree. When he woke up, there were hundreds of donkeys. <laughs> the donkey had babies and more babies, and they hung around. And the tree was fully grown. He was harvesting fruit from the tree. So Chani Amago says to this man, the tree grew overnight. He says, what? He said, I just saw you planting the tree. He said, I didn't plant this tree. Who planted the tree? My grandfather planted this tree. Took him a while to realize that he slept for 70 years. Man, you slept for 70 years, lived in a Tisrael. Anyway, he goes into a yeshiva. You can imagine how he looked. <laughs> They're wearing the same clothing. He looked, you know, like a person comes in the 90s. A guy had a long beard. He was all disheveled. He walks into the Bismedrish. And they're talking. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody recognizes him. They didn't have pictures. They have the videos. No one stands up. A schnorrer came into the Bismedrish, a panhandler. And the Chachamim are screaming at each other and arguing back and forth. And finally says, you're wrong. How do you know wrong? 
Because Chani Amagel said kach v'kach. So this guy with a beard down till here with the shmata says, excuse me, Chani Amagel didn't say that. Chani Amagel said exactly the opposite. So they turn around and they see an ancient looking man who came like, like, a, like a malach born from a different world and says, how do you know what Chani Amagel said? He says, I know Chani. I'm Chani Amagel. And they started laughing at him. Oh, Shalom Aleichem, and I'm Napoleon. <laughs> I'm Napoleon, Mr. I'm Napoleon. <laughs> I put my hand in my shirt. I'm short. I have a problem with self-image. I'm Napoleon. <laughs> so he started to laugh. He was very hurt. And he started to argue with them. He started to show them that he's Chayni. He was so much smarter than they were, just two generations. They didn't understand. He was so much greater a chokham that they were, that not only they real, they didn't even understand that it was chokma. So he walked out of this medrash, and he davened. This is a famous lashon gemara. Im loy chavrusa misusa. You know what I mean? Im loy chavrusa misusa. You speak Hebrew. Im loy chavrusa misusa. It's Aramaic, but it's very similar. If I can't have friends, chaver. <laughs> if I have no friends, I want to die. Imloy chavrusa misus, and he dies. That's what the Gemara says. Imloy. After he died, they understood this was takachoni. So they ran to look for this guy. He was gone. Too late. That's a Gemara. It's a Gemara. I'm sorry for breaking your heart. It's a Gemara. It's a Mish. It's a Gemara. It's a Gemara. I mean, the reason the Gemara tells the story is because the beginning of the story is Achenei Amagel Davin for rain. This part of the story, you know, he made a circle around himself. Og Uga, and I'm not going to stand up at a circle and it rained. It took a while, but he made it rain. And there's a whole bunch of Chassidus about the difference between how the Shimon Bar made it rain through Torah and how Achenei Amagel made it rain through Tefillah. Achenei Amagel lived in the time of the Second Beis Hamikdash. She was much before the Shimon. The time of the Zugis. But that's the story of the Gemara. So sometimes a person is so smart, people don't understand. And if you're smart, the people don't understand you, they look at you like a fool. Right? If, if regular people would sit down and meet Albert Einstein, they would think he's a weirdo, a machine with long hair, <laughs> disheveled, forgot to go to the barber, huh? But you don't understand? Avram Avinu was so smart. Avram. And the Abish gave him a hay. What happened when the Abish gave him a hay? He became even smarter. You know how smart he became? That he can talk to any person and they'll understand him. Before he had, this hasn't taken anybody just like lecha. Before the Abish gave him the hay, he was Avram. Of means Chochma. You have Abba and Ima. Right? You look at the time, you pay the Gimel. Chochma is Abba and Vino is Ima. Chochma is the father, being is the mother. Avram, Avram was the Madrega of Chochma Ram, Sechel, Anela, Mikol, Rai. Nobody can understand Avram Avinu's Chochma. So Avram Avinu was very, very smart. He wanted to teach the world about Akadish Baruch Hu, but the people didn't understand him. They didn't understand to such an extent that they could have made fun of him. So he gave him a hay, which made him even smarter. Even smarter. But the hay, which the Abish added, gave him the kind of smarts, like it does in Rashi. That you could speak to every single Jew. So, when you add a hey, you add a higher level to a person that's high, he comes lower. A person at a high level, raise him even higher, and then he comes to the lowest levels. You understand? You understand? Yeah? One of the examples for this, and I'm making this up a little bit, just a little bit, is the Hebrew name Shulamis. Shuvi Shuvi Ashulamis. It's in some what is it in uh Shirashinim, yeah? Shulamis. He didn't go Shulamis. Right? The this is the right Pasak. The Shulamis I'm making up. Anehi Shlaime Shlaimne Amune Yisro. What's that Shulamis? Uh, it's a girl's name. What does Shulamis mean? I'm whole. I'm complete. I'm complete. Shulamis means I'm complete. Shalem, I'm whole. What's the proof that you're whole? Not that you have a head. But that you have feet. A picabola, Malchus is called Shulamis. Malchus is all the feminine. Malchus, all the feminine name. 
Malchus is called Shulamis. Anoichi, Shloim Nei Amun Yisrael. Anoichi is Kesa, the highest level. Shloim Nei Amun Yisrael. When are Yidin whole? When they also have feet. Because having feet is a symptom, not of being lower, of being so high that there's no dilemma of being so high that you cannot be low. You can be from the highest Madaregas to the lowest Madaregas. And that's the meaning of the word Shulamit. That's what the word Shulamis means. And again, the, the posture that's brought in Chassid is in Lehi, Shleime or Shleimne with a nun. The word Amun is used. The whole discussion of Chassid is. But the point is that to be whole doesn't mean you have a head. To be whole means to have feet. That you can bring it to the lowest level. The story I told you many times about Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov lived in Europe. And the Yisrael was the Rechaim HaKadosh, the Rechaim ben Atar. And the Baal Shem Tov tried three different times to go to Israel to meet him, and he never succeeded. So we sent a letter to his brother-in-law, who lived in Israel, to ask the Rechaim HaKadosh if he thought they would ever meet. He asked his brother-in-law, of Geshe Kittimah, to ask the Rechaim HaKadosh if they would ever meet in this world. So the Chaim HaKadosh said to the Geshe Kittimah, said to the Baal Shem Tov, brother, tell me. When your brother-in-law, when the Baal Shem Tov sees me, what does he see? When he sees me, what does he see? So he answered back. He sees your whole body except for the bottom of your feet. So the Chaim HaKadosh said, if he doesn't see the bottom of my feet, we'll never meet in this world. Because the feet represent bringing it to the lowest madregas. The koyach to bring to the lowest madregas is from the kus, which is from the very, very highest madregas. And that's such the word shulamis. That's shleimus. Yeah? And that's also how you translate the word Ashir al Hashem ki gomal aloy. Aniba chas tochom atachti. A yid trust in the chas of the Abish which comes from higher than Ishtal Shalos. Yoge li bi bi Yeshua secha. The Abish gives a yid Yeshua salvation, help. And because Hashem gives a yid salvation, if a yoge yid is happy, Ashir al Havai ki gomal aloy. I'm not making this up. It says in Chsidis. What's the taish? Why am I seeing a yid baruch gomal aloy? Hashem gave me a koyach that's very, very, very high. And because the koyach is very, very high, it allows me to bring the Abish to the, to the very, very lowest levels. And that's really what Mashiach is. You know, if you've been around Lubavitch at all, you've been brainwashed, right? Mashiach is not about the higher world. Mashiach is about this world. Mashiach is about action. Mashiach is about shulamis. Mashiach is about anoichi shleim ne yemune Yisrael. Mashiach is about kigo malaloi. The Abish that brings kindness to the very highest levels of a yid. And by the virtue of the fact that the Abish that brings shleim is the very highest level of a yid, the yid has a feet that can stand firmly on the ground. And that's the pshat. Yogil li bibi Yeshua. Sacha yid is happy with the Abish is Yeshua because kigo malaloi. Um, the Abish that gives a year, a kayak very high level, which completes a year all the way to the bottom of his feet. Did you understand? That's Moshe Rabbim, right? T Panamayish, that's Moshe Yochit. Am I right? More or less? That's all my Russian, I'm out of words. Um, let me share with you a word, which I love. Which is consistent with this whole uh, hezbe that I'm giving you, okay? A word, a word, an idea, mila. A word means mishpat. Davar katsad im tochen amok. Um. People have done handwriting analysis of some of the rabbim. I've told this to you before. People have done handwriting analysis from the rabbim. You know what handwriting analysis is, yeah? There's a guy, Yaakov Rosenthal, he's a friend of mine. He's written a book on it. Friend of mine, he's an acquaintance. I can't call my friend, he's much older than him. But he's written a book on handwriting analysis. You give him your handwriting, he looks at it, tells the other thing about you. And it's scary how accurate it is. It's, you don't want to know. <laughs> I did it the first time. I said, I'm never doing it. I just gave him my signature. I was writing a check. And he started telling me all my milestones, all my chasrenes, that I'm a dreamer, that I'm very, very creative, but I don't get things done. I have no feet. And so he told me. And it's true. <laughs> I'm a philosopher. I'm head in the clouds. So anyway, there are people who did handwriting analysis of the various, of the Alter Rebbe, 
of the Rebbe, the Rebbe Tznaw, the Rebbe, the Rebbe Tznaw, they also did a handwriting analysis of the Rebbe Marash. The beginning of the story is that there was a Jew in Israel's name was Shneya Zalman Rubashov, otherwise known as Zalman Shazar, the second president of Etzisro. Zalman Shazar was a Lubavitcher. His name was Shneya Zalman Rubashov, a Gevara Shazar. Bekitzer, the Mitch Shazar, right? Ben Gurion said every name has to have one syllable. So Shnei Zam Rubashov the Yavon Shazar. He was he was that from in the beginning of his life. At the end of his life, he became from. Was very closely connected to the Rebbe Shazar. Shazar made something that was called Chug Chain Chesnun Chug Chain. What was Chug Chain? There was a Yid in Israel who was a big Chacham, a big scholar. His name was Rabbi Avraham Chain. He was the son of Rabbi. He was a chocham. He was modern. He had a beard. He was from, but he wasn't a chassid. He came from Spitz Chabad. I mean, he came from the highest level of Chassid Chabad. But he himself was a he was a, he was a Zionist. He was a modern man, brilliant, very scholarly man. The Rebbe had a personal relationship with Rabbi Avraham Chaim. Anyway, Avraham Chaim lived in Eretz Yisrael, and Shazad knew him, and Shazad had a special gishmak, a special delight in the memorium of the Alter Rebbe. Why? Because his name was Shneir Zalman. He can't tell the Rebbe's name. So when he became the Nasi, became the president of Israel, he organized a shir in the Beta Nasi in the Maimonim of the Alter Rebbe. Our Rebbe actually printed four krachim, four volumes of the Alter Rebbe's Hasidus then, with money that Shazar procured from the cultural fund, from the, not from the Germans, the Mahmoud, in the late 50s, early 60s. So they had a shir in the Alter Rebbe's Hasidus. Then the Bavram Chain died. Niftar. So Chug Chain needed a Mamalamok. So they chose a young man who was in his late 20s. His name was Adin Steinsalz, now known as Adin Neven Yisrael. He took over the Bavram Chain's Shir. And that Shir lasted till Shazad died in 1975. That's from the early 60s to the mid 70s. So we get together once a week, I think, in Beis Anossi. He was the president of Israel and they would learn Chassidus. Look at the Tera, my mom with Alta Rebbe, and so forth. In 1963, Tovshin Chov Gimel was the 150th yard site of the Alta Rebbe. It's not a it was called Kufnun, the 150th yard site of the Alta Rebbe. So Shazar had an idea. His idea was to make something called Sefer Hakan. Sefer Hakan was a book on the Alta Rebbe for 150 years. I have the Sefer, it's a small little book. It didn't come out till 1968 or 69. It took forever to come out. It took many years. Three quarters of the Sefer Akan is Steinsaltz's articles. The first place where Steinsaltz writes his opinion, Achsidus Chabad, nobody knew Steinsaltz was a Lubavitcher. Steinsaltz was a Lubavitcher. He's a Rebbe Sachosid. The first place where Steinsaltz showed his Yeda in Achsidus Chabad, it was this Sefer Akan. There's a bunch of articles on Al Rebbe and Achsidus and so on. In this Sefer Akan, Shazar printed many things. He was the, he, he signs his name, it was his book. He writes that we had Shiva of Ram Chain, it was called Chug Chain, then Avram Chain passed away, and now we have a Avrech, Adin Steins has given the machine, and see this. Anyway, in this book called Sefer Akan, he hired a woman, an Israeli woman, not from, to do a handwriting analysis of the Alter Rebbe. And he sent a copy to our Rebbe. And the Rebbe wrote Shazad a letter that if you would not tell me personally, I would think that this woman knew the Alter Rebbe ponim al ponim. Her analysis was so precise. The Rebbe was so impressed that you could look at a person's handwriting and you could read so much about who a person is. The Rebbe said, just by reading this handwriting analysis, it looks like she knew him personally. And Alter Rebbe passed away 200 years, 150 years before, you understand? You understand? So somebody did a handwriting analysis also of the Rebbe Marash. The truth of the matter is this idea is true of all the Rebbe. And I read it. I have it someplace on my computer. You know? And the computer, you could save everything, but then you have to know where you put it. <laughs> it's two problems, saving it and then finding what you saved. So, so th this man or this woman did an analysis of the handwriting of the Rebbe Marash. And what he writes is that the Rebbe Marash is a great scholar, brilliant man. But he's an incredibly practical man. Everything that he touches, he carries through till action. Till my you give him an Edel Azach, a theoretical Madreya, as it were. 
and he carries it through till action. And he writes, this person who did the analysis of the Rebbe Nash handwriting says, it's remarkable to see a person whose brain is up there and his feet are on the ground. That's called Shulamis. And that's Ki Gom Alaloi. Ashir Lashem Ki Gom. The Abish gives us the Gemilas Chasodim. The Gemilas Chasodim that the Abish gives us is a Tzav. It's a very high level. And in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Chasidus, they explain what level is. And therefore, it comes down into action. And uh, this is what Mashiach means. Mashiach means that ki gomal aloi, because Hashem gives us a koyach and the higher madregis, it comes down into vani bechas it comes down into a kindness which shows itself all the way down into this world. And which is really how we understand Mashiach. We do not understand Mashiach as raising ourselves above the world. To the contrary, we understand Mashiach as bringing the Abishtad into this world. How do you bring the Abishta to this world? You have to go higher. You have to go deeper. Huh? And that's the key goal. I'll tell you about it. My father was saying, he's unten stark. My father should live and be well. He's my father. My tata, yeah? He told me, he had a very special relationship with the Rebbe. He had many yechidis with the Rebbe. I'm talking about the 50s and the 60s. My father was an orphan. My father does not remember his mother. And I feel like the Rebbe had a very special sense of a chayis to you say my father treated my father different i think and i think part of the reason is because my father had a hard life he didn't have an easy life he was born in moscow he had to run to siberia because of the nazis then he had to leave russia he was raised by his father alone he had a very hard childhood anyway so my father told me so stark that he was a in yechidis he was talking about Avedis Atfil, about davening. And the discussion was about the idea of the Adai Tahayyim Vashivay Salavavecha. So when you learn an idea in Hasidus and you understand an idea in Hasidus and you think over an idea of Hasidus, has to change your heart. So he told the Rebbe that Mitzad Mitzli Dariches, because his borders are so long, there's no Avavayir. Because I spent so much time in my brain, nothing happens. You understand? To, you get so caught up in the brain, nothing happens. So the Rebbe stopped and he thought for a moment and he said these words. In English. I don't understand why it has to be that way, that you're so busy with the brain that there's no possibility for the heart. Go in even deeper. This is what he told my father. My father complained to the Rebbe, then you learn Chassidus and you think Chassidus because of the Arichas, because you're so busy with the brain, nothing happens in the heart. And the Rebbe said, I don't understand why that is. Go in deeper. Let's go in deeper and go higher. What happens when you go higher? It comes lower. And that's the Ashidu Adeshem ki go malaloi. The Abish to give us a koyach, that our Yiddishkeit should be lived in this world. And that our Yiddishkeit that lived in this world, this is what Mashiach means. Questions or comments? If you have no questions and you have no comments, I have a comment. My comment is It's a great achievement. We learned the whole Hoidu. So, Bishop, next week, I hope we're going to learn Chumash, Sikhis. And I'll do it for the same thing, four or five weeks. We'll do Amalek. That's what we're holding. We're going to be holding Pashta um, Amalek. And uh, then we'll go back to Siddur. The next piece of Siddur is Miz Meshech and Nukas Abayi a little bit before Baruch Shama. We good? No, we learn, what I do is we learn the story of the Chumash. Oh, like the actual Chumash. The story with Chassidus. The story of the Chumash with Chassidus. So we started with Lech Lecha many years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And now we're holding the end of Bishalach. And if you, if you go online, I have a, a folder called Sir Siddur Rebbe Themes. Teme, that's Russian. Teme is Russian. Themes. And in the section of themes, they have the story of the two Chumash, have Avram, uh, the, the patriarchs, Yosef and his brothers, and then they have Golas and Gula. Okay, we good? Shalom, shalom. He shame Hashem Averach Matav Adoylam. I really consider this a milestone. It's a big deal. Okay. Uh...